Hey, this is Jeff with Tenacor, and we're going to talk about common mistakes for concealed carry. One of the first mistakes people make for concealed carry is holsters, and typically it's cheap holsters that are not designed to carry and conceal the gun in a robust and intelligent way. A good concealed carry holster should, number one, hold the gun securely. And so the gun should um, be in the holster when it's intended to be in the holster and not come out until you want it to come out. One of the biggest mistakes with holsters is easy on, easy off. And so people feel like they want the convenience to put the holster on. And if the holster is too easy to put on, it's also really easy to come off. And the holster is going to come off when you least intend it to. Additionally, with the attachments, they should be robust. So oftentimes attachments are the cheapest, easiest way for a holster manufacturer to connect the gun and holster to a belt or the body. Big bulky attachments like big thick plastic loops or clips, um, and then also extra hardware. So if the holster maker is putting screws and spacers and clips and all kinds of stuff stacked on top of each other. The guns are typically around an inch thick. You know, you can find holsters that when you measure the overall thickness, including the attachment, it can get close to two inches. You can double the thickness. And really, when it comes to concealed carry, the overall thickness of the gun and the holster combination is the thing that's hard to conceal. We want something that is durable and robust, something that will stay on the belt and in place, even under the pressure of real life circumstances. So not just getting in and out of your car or dry firing in front of your mirror, um, but if you're rolling around on the ground fighting with somebody, is the holster gonna stay where it's supposed to be? But really what you want are holsters that, is, that are designed specifically for concealment. So on the belt, belt holsters with big bulgy attachments, something like a paddle holster isn't really designed for concealment, it's just designed for range use and ease of carry and isn't really suitable for concealed carry because it's gonna print and it's not gonna hide the gun very well. Also things like a Blackhawk Serpa holster, right? I mean, there's obviously issues with the mechanism that don't work very well. Put your trigger finger pressing basically on top of the trigger, uh, which is dangerous. But then also the way the holster is designed, the gun sits way far out from the body and doesn't lend itself to concealment. So you wanna make sure you find a holster that has uh, high quality attachments that are durable, that are robust, and that are gonna sit low profile relative to the holster so that when you put it on, um, it's gonna sit low profile relative to the body and not be bulky unnecessarily in print. The second challenge for a lot of people is using the wrong belt. Usually it's one of two extremes. It is the belt that they bought at Old Navy that is flimsy and soft and is barely works for holding your pants up and you add the weight of a gun and a holster and it doesn't work at all. And so having something thin and flimsy like that is a no-go. Then on the other extreme, as far as concealed carry goes, is taking a belt that is stiff and durable um, like a duty belt that someone has basically taken a duty belt thickness uh, and duty belt sturdiness and turned it into a concealment belt. And that also doesn't make sense, right? The reason why that law enforcement duty or, mil or competition belt is so thick is because you're putting so much weight on it and that weight is hanging off of it and not sitting close to the body. And so that's important for those uses, but it's not important for concealed carry. So for concealed carry, you need a belt that is just stiff and rigid enough to support the weight of the gun you're gonna carry. So if you're gonna carry something like a Glock 19 or a 43X, particularly on the inside of the waistband holster, you don't need that stiff of a belt. So you want something that is purpose-built for concealment and for carrying a gun, but not something that is so overly thick and heavy that it's uncomfortable. And what can actually happen is you can get kind of this looping effect where the belt actually creates this big profile around your body that sometimes can print even more. And so having the right belt with the right balance is important. The third issue to address is clothing choices. It's a big, heavy piece of metal and you're trying to carry it around and conceal it. And that is a new thing for most people. Just like with a belt being too flimsy or too stiff, you can have issues with clothing that are too tight or clothing that is too baggy. So clothing that is too tight, there isn't enough room to, or volume in there to conceal the gun without printing. And some people may not care and that's fine if you don't. There needs to be some 
volume to the clothing and it can't be skin tight in order to conceal the gun properly. So that there's a balance of that. But also on the other end of things, you can have clothing that is too big and loose. It might work well for covering the gun up, but it may not work well for keeping the gun secure and stable. So like, it's not just the belt, but it's your pants. And the pants have to be loose enough that it's not printing weirdly. And it also has to be tight enough and sturdy enough that it supports the weight of the gun and really the tension of your pants against the holster, and this is for an inside the waistband holster, is really important for optimized carry and for optimized concealment. If you have clothing that is too loose and is dangling around, that clothing sometimes can get caught in places you don't want it to. So it may not stay tucked in behind the holster very well. It also, if you're training and using the gun, you may draw and the, the shirt comes out or the shirt gets tucked into the holster and you end up with all kinds of issues with regard to training and use of the holster because you have this big baggy flowing clothing all over the place. The fourth mistake for concealed carry is thinking that you need the tiniest gun possible. Right there can, again, this is a kind of an extreme thing. Some people will go with the smallest gun possible. Some people go with the biggest gun possible. And what you need to find is the balance of concealability and shootability. Generally, the bigger the gun, the more shootable it is. And the smaller the gun, the more concealable it is. So you gotta find the right balance based on your clothing style and your body shape and size on what is basically the biggest gun you can get away with concealing. The final thing to talk about for a, someone who is new to concealed carry is the temptation to carry with an empty chamber. Carrying with an empty chamber is kind of like thinking I'm going to drive in my car without a seatbelt and thinking that I will see the accident coming. I'll have the time and the reaction and the ability under the pressure of the collision to grab my seatbelt and buckle it before I actually get into the crash. Like it seems like a good idea from the perspective of I don't want to shoot myself, but if you're really carrying the gun for the purposes of saving yourself and the people that you care about, it is not something that's going to be helpful. The idea that you are going to be able to draw the gun and react and cycle the action and get everything going in the time needed to deploy the gun and the fact that you're going to remember that is extremely unlikely. Typically the people who are carrying with the empty chamber are also the people with the lowest skill set. If you're not at the point where you're comfortable carrying with a loaded chamber, then perhaps you're not at the point where you should be carrying a gun in the first place. People who have been around guns a long time and are used to carrying guns, none of those people think about carrying with an empty chamber. And the right answer, if you are tempted to carry with an empty chamber, is just get more training. Get more competence, get more skill, get more confidence with the gun and carrying the gun, and that is the right answer. Thanks for watching. While we didn't talk about it in this video, we do have equipment that supports concealed carry. So if you're looking for a good concealment holster or a good concealment belt, go check out tenacore.com.